couple of years down the road, you're like uh, wandering the hallways of a mansion in Beverly Hills. Whose mansion am I in? <clears throat> so you... <clears throat> The mansion that you're in is, uh, it belongs to, uh, this guy. His name is Phineas Q. Bowling. Phineas Q. Bowling is yeah. the owner of the mansion where I'm staying. I'm staying. Is this like. I'm visiting and I'm staying like I'm crashing there, or is this like I'm renting this mansion or I am what's my relationship to this? So you've been um hired as a uh a performer, but also kind of like a host. So basically, uh you're the entertainment and also kind of like a uh like a host basically for a PG thirteen rated bachelor party. What the f a bachelor party? Yeah, so it's so basically uh Phineas uh bowling, he his family recently um they were uh awarded a substantial amount of money from uh excuse me from the uh the board of contributions to society. Oh yeah. Yeah. His family is responsible for bringing bowling to America. And recently they were finally able to, they basically have to satisfy several forms of criteria in order to pass it. So only yeah. recently were they able to definitively prove that they were the family that did it because there's another family that was claiming that they did it too. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and also so, of the bowling name, surname. Yeah. The bowling family, the bowling family, Three different of, branches of the bowling tree. Yeah. Okay. They're from um they're from a part of town called Holly Weird. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. So um they're kind of an interesting family. Uh but the other family, uh the other bowling family, uh it's spelled um B so like it's spelled differently, you know what I mean? It's spelled yeah, yeah. B O W L L so far I N G. So two L. Oh, there's an extra L in there. There's two L's in that thing. So they had like a kind of like a, a showdown, you know what I mean? Over who was gonna get uh, the money. It was tied up in the, the courts for a very long time. But relatively recently, the family was able to finally cash in. So they are kind of rolling in it. And the thing about Phineas Bowling is that even though his family is now very rich, so rich, like this is like clearly like new money kind of a thing. Very much like, so, yes. Okay, so they weren't like already well off; they were just normal, regular people, and then were awarded how much money? They were uh, awarded seventeen million dollars. Yeah, seventeen extra large. Yep. The only concession that he had to make in it is that he got tattooed across his chest for those who came before us. <laughs> what? Yeah. What the fuck? He's got to get why? And then why when, does he have to? And when he did it to, to like, that was just the thing. It's like, yeah, you get the money, but like, you know, tattoo for, for those, those who came before us. Yeah. That's like, there's, that's like they're saying, you know what I mean? And so uh, he, after he got the tattoo, he took a photo of it and like sent it to like the group chat and all of the uh, the people on the board, they all responded in the text with for those who came before us. So there's like, you know, like 17 of them with <laughs> saying for those who came before us. God damn. So this guy's deal is he is basically a fairly decent guy. You know, he's got a solid uh, group of friends that they've been around since high school. Some of them even earlier than that. Um, and they're just like, you know, they, they, they call themselves the solid dudes and the solid dudes are all like, 
They just happen to be decent. You know, I wouldn't call they wouldn't call themselves moral, but you know what I mean. Christian yeah. boys, and yeah. so they're just good, just good people. Yeah, and you know, they're they're religious. They're not so religious that they're you know they're not necessarily like we you know they're not crazy people you know yeah but at the same time you know the, the woman that he's marrying um Cindy Lou she basically was like look all my life i've just heard nothing but like these horrible stories about what happens at these uh bachelor parties and okay i see also like you know i would like to remind you that you know we are, you know, Christians, you know, let's conduct ourselves okay. as such, you know. Wait, so they hire me to host and tell jokes at a PG-13 Christian bachelor party. So here's the deal. It's PG-13 in the sense that there's no like strippers, you know what I mean? There's nothing debaucherous going on, you know, there's. They're not going to sit around, you know, watching stag films, you know what I mean? Or, or even snuff films, nothing like that. That's also specified very clearly. There are sure. no snuff films allowed. Okay. This it doesn't. Party. But, Fine. you know, hanging out with the bros, um, knocking back a couple of beers, maybe even a shot of uh, whiskey or two, listening to some, you know, raunchy humor, you know, they know how to have a good time. Okay, that's that's fine. That rules. That's so, like what my friends and I would do. Yeah, so that's basically uh okay. I'm what running it my is. fucking element at this right. point. And so okay, this, these guys uh is... yeah, they um he actually had seen you at a uh, a show relatively recently and he was like, "Oh, you should like." And he told you the whole story about how like he's like, "Yeah, hi. Uh my my family bought bowling to America and blah blah blah." blah. So, he's like Basically, you know, he gives you the guidelines as there's it's not you don't there's no like uh, content restrictions or anything. You're basically just doing 45 minutes. How many how many people are going to be there? Well, the solid dudes do run pretty deep, so there's going to be about like. There's going to be exactly 28. And so is this all that's a big fucking group. Is this they, like all are they all the solid dudes or like they solid dudes with like their partners? Like who what is the composition of this crowd? Are they are they gonna be are they gonna expect that I'm gonna be me as a comedian? I don't want to show up to like something that has like a Christian undertone and then just be not that person and like no, piss people. No, it's not like that. It's it, they're not people who that that's just that's more like their background. It's not necessarily a thing where, you know, when you meet him, he goes, "Hey, how are you? God bless you." You know what I mean? It's not like that. Okay, that, that's just that's just more of a a background detail. It's not something that is gonna okay. affect the performance or you know the the. The bachelor party experience. So there's 28 dudes at this bachelor party. Exactly 28 dudes. That's a big fucking bachelor party. That's a giant. That is the biggest one I I would have ever heard of. Well, it's a good thing that there's a theater in this mansion. <sighs> okay. It's so got I'm just... it's got exactly 28 seats. <laughs> he actually I'm... like he had this built especially for the occasion. You feel like not oh, necessarily not necessarily for you, but. At some point, he knew that all of this uh, solid dudes were going to come together again as one. It's the first time that they've they all. It. Yeah, it's like he just knew at some point they're going to do it. And we're going to I'm going to need 28 seats for something here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's something just turned out to be you. How much am I getting paid to do this? And what's the time commitment? You're doing 45 minutes. Um, You are getting paid five thousand dollars. But I'm also like hosting and like you made it sound like I'm doing other stuff. I'm talking. I'm. So I'm a host. So um, basically uh, what you do is you come out, you're, you're supposed to come out, you perform for the guys. And then afterward, 
you got you just kind of walk them to um where they're gonna like eat dinner and stuff yeah and you kind of drop them off there and that's pretty much it you're basically just performing and then walking what then and for some reason he says it the exact same way every single time walking the boys to dinner like that's an exact quote so it's you're gonna go up 45 minutes then you walk the boys to dinner and then that's it you know that and, sucks and it's um you know it's it's deep in the the beverly hills and so right. they're actually setting you up with a uh a place to stay nearby like a nearby hotel i don't it's a it's i'll be okay yeah but the only thing about these hills is that these are very deep hills you know are, this this gig doesn't sound like it's worth it if I can't leave when I'm done. So I have I mean, to I have to walk the boys to dinner first. Yeah. Yeah. You walk the boys <laughs> to dinner after making them laugh. And so basically, um, so earlier that evening, you went up and performed. And it was um basically exactly kind of it went exactly how you kind of think it would go, where it's they're definitely like rowdy, but rowdy. They're like pretending to be rowdy, you know what I mean? Because it's like a yeah, lot. Yeah. It's a live comedy show. So they're like, oh, hey, like when, when you're like, hey, guys, how you doing tonight? We're doing good. Like, you know what I mean? They're like super. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, You end up doing about you end up doing almost an hour. The last like 20 minutes is all pretty much the first like 10 minutes last about 20 or like crowd work and then it's like you know mostly you know kind of just store you know telling stories and, and doing your regular shit in between you know yeah, you yeah I, think you just, I think you just nailed the the aaron brooks comedy experience yeah you stumble for a little bit you figure it out and then it just goes off the rails and then you're done then you fulfilled your time the a b c e <laughs> is what you call it the Aaron Brooks comedy dominoes stumble, figure it out, lose it. But this is one, one of those. Just... This is one of those nights where it's like you're playing dominoes, but and you're killing at dominoes, but you're knocking over every fucking dominoes. But the dominoes are like playfully fighting back. You know what I mean? But you fucking Ooh. knock down every single one of those things. It's a lot of fun, and. Good. You, uh, they're like, all right. Well, thank you. You're basically like, all right, guys. Well, uh, you guys have been a lot of fun. Uh, I gotta walk you boys to dinner. Yeah, they give you so a bell. Fun. You like ring a bell. <laughs> I'm not and ringing a like, fucking bell. You ring a bell. These grown men to dinner. <laughs> and so you're um ringing a fucking bell. And basically, the reason that you're doing it is that you're the only one who knows, like, you know where. The dining hall is, you know what I mean? It's, wow, it's basically, this is not my home. Well, because th that's part of your responsibilities. Uh, it's oh, detailed. Man, I gotta... So, so, but so all you have to do is walk around, like, you know, just you give yourself an extra like 10 minutes to walk around, and you're like, okay, yeah, I know exactly where I'm going. And so you walk uh, the boys right into that fucking dining hall. You drop them off, you know, uh, there's a, a bunch of like, um, chefs in there and they have like you know that class the classic chefs hats on you know what i mean yeah yeah setting yeah. up uh you know what looks like a, a buffet line of just the most exquisite looking cuts of meat that you've ever seen in your fucking life god damn there's like a rack of lamb you know great good for them like that yeah hell yeah and um phineas is like um Aaron, uh, as usual, uh, my wife uh, ordered way too much food. So if you're hungry, uh, you're more than welcome uh, to grab some food. Um, if you want to take it to go, uh, that's fine. You can also, you know, sit down if you want. What do you do? Oh, dude, I'm taking it. I'm taking it to go. Yeah, I'm not going to. I yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get it. I'm going to eat in my car. I don't want to eat with all these strange people. Right. And feel feel the, you know feel the pressure of having to entertain with a yeah. mouthful of delicious food. Yeah. It's always, um, yeah. The message to, uh, 
to all the performers out there is after you're done, you got to leave. Yeah. Eat you in the car. You can't hang out. You just can't. Take it to go thing. Yeah. But eat, eat it in the car. You're making the it's right okay. Choice. Yeah. And so he's like, definitely. Uh, yeah. He doesn't really push it. And so um, I would obviously thank him because that is very gracious. He's like, yeah, definitely. I get it, man. He's like, yeah, it's all good. And so, you know, he's pretty easy going, dude. And so um, you one of the. uh, One of the uh, the cooks with like uh, the classic, uh, you know, chef's hat walks over. He has like a a to go box uh, with like, you know, a bunch of different stuff wrapped up for you, you know. Fuck yeah. He goes, here you go. And he goes, by the way. um, He's like, I had my um, my ear to the wall, man. You were pretty funny. Say thank you, sir. I appreciate your service. And I raise the to go container in his in direction. You see his bottom lip quiver and like a tear like starts to slide down his cheek. Yeah. He's like, Thank you. He You're goes, welcome. He goes, that means everything, Aaron. <laughs> This guy sucks. sucks. All right. First, it was cool, but come on. <laughs> He's a bit much, you think? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> so, um, so uh, you leave the dining hall. You know, you got your to go box with like a bunch of uh, just sizzling cuts of meat. And uh, so I just have a box of meat. A box of meat, and there's you know, there's like a tell a lo- me what's in what's in this box. A, there's a loaded uh baked potato as well. Okay. Uh there are um there's silver cutlery that you just get to keep. I don't need that. I really don't need cutlery. Well, and it's we, gonna give me a false sense of weight of how heavy this thing is, and it's gonna get me more excited because I'm gonna think it's heavier than what it actually is. Well, you need to just, like eat the food. That's what I got hands for. You know, yeah, but I'm eating in my car. <laughs> but the thing is that you, um, you didn't actually end up driving yourself there. What? So their thing is, they're like, all right, look. So we know that you don't want to stay at the the hotel, uh, which is fine. However, um, we are pretty deep in in these hills, so we just hired uh, like a local car service, and they're gonna right. They're take gonna take it. me home. Yeah, they're like, just because they. No. They know the roads. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's like, or he's like, and the I roads, appreciate that. And the roads know them. What? But what kind know, of relationship does this driver have to this specific road? He just like shrugs and he goes, Hey man, you can take the fella out of uh Holly weird, but you can't take the Holly weird out of the fella. You know, that is terrifying. <laughs> he winks. I think him. I'm going to get a car. <laughs> then I'm going to get in the car with this person. Well, not with him. There's a different. This is the. Oh, uh, OK. This is not yeah. the driver. No, no, no. The driver is just some guy. You don't know who he is. OK. And so um, you're walking back. And as you're walking down the halls, you kind of realize like. Oh, shit. Like, I don't actually know where I am. Oh, fuck you, Pat. I. Yeah. <laughs> This sucks. I don't want to be stuck in this place. Why are you keeping me here? So you kind of like are like where? Because you you feel like you knew where you were going when you were uh, walking the boys to dinner. But after that, you (laughs) you were like, you're kind of like, wait, you kind of feel like you got turned around or something. Also, some of the uh, the paintings, uh, you feel like they're definitely the eyes move. Fuck you. You just feel like it. I mean, you know, I don't know if they actually are. But uh, and I, yeah, and it's also all it's all just different uh, paintings of um, of Ozzy Osbourne throughout his life and his career. It's weird. Why? I don't. I guess he just he's just a huge you know Oz head. All right. Yes. Yeah. So you're uh, walking around, and then suddenly you hear like a like a ticking noise. Maybe a clock, perhaps. Yeah. And you you kind of like look over and there's like a 
like a like it looks like someone's study or something. Okay. And there's nobody in it. But on the wall is one of those old timey cat clocks. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. They look they look from side to side, or the eyes would rather go back and forth and the, the tail goes the back tail. and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. A classic cat clock. Back to the future. <laughs> one time you had a dream um that all of those uh cat clocks in all the world were connected almost like through some kind of like network, you know, they can all see through each other's eyes. That's a terrifying thought. And you woke up the next morning shivering. Your blanket was gone, you never found it again. What the fuck? So where'd it go? <laughs> you just you never figured it out. And so you Jesus kind of have Christ. like you kind of have I'm like gonna this, get a new one. You kind of have like this weird like flashback for a second you know and then um you kind of uh look up and you see that there's like a a tv above uh the desk uh and you kind of like squint in the darkness to see what it is and then you hear aaron Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. god damn it <sighs> yeah aaron 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 and you're like, what the hell? And you look up and you realize that the noise is coming from the TV. There's a a football game happening. Or it was happening. What's happening is there's like it's the it's the Cowboys versus the Washington Commanders. Oh, NFC East battle. This time it's personal. <laughs> 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 the owner of uh of the Washington Commanders uh had an affair with uh the wife of uh the owner of uh the Cowboys. So, oh fuck. And this is like the first time that they're going against each other since the uh, you know, the the scandal broke. Like he ended up, you know, stealing the guy's wife essentially. Jesus. Yeah. And so um that game's on. Uh, however, <laughs> this the, time to wait. Hang on. The media is also pushing this because well, they <laughs> this know. Time yeah, it's personal. It, it became like a scandal. You know, it became like like a big storyline throughout the, uh, you know, like the off season. You know, that the commander's owner is fucking the Cowboys' owner's wife. Yeah. This time it's personal. Like and they're bringing his, it into the broadcast. And his thing is is has has always been. Hey, look, that guy knew it was going on. If you ask yeah. me, I think he was kind of into it. So he's kind of going like, I don't know what this guy's talking Man. about. You know what I mean? So it, it's it really is getting personal. It's a juicy story, you know? Yeah. And like so, there's actual beef and not just like. The media hype beef, like these guys genuinely don't like each other. So. You feel like the uh, the owner of the of the Cowboys has a a deep dislike of uh, of the other one, but how could you not? You feel like the the owner of the Commanders. I, mean, I don't know any of these guys, you know, real names or whatever, but the owner of the Commanders. You feel like he is being kind of coy, like he's more more like you know messing with them a little bit, you know. <laughs> he's fucking the man's wife. No, not 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 in that way. I mean, in like the, his public statements about it. You know, yeah. in the sense of like of being like, hey, this really isn't that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Like who who cares what what happens? Though I do think it's kind of weird that he's acting like he didn't know this was happening. So I'm just saying that I don't want to get too deep, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever, you know. So it, it does get pretty intense. And so it's right before kickoff. And. It's the the strangest thing. Every single player on the screen is like frozen basically they're not frozen as in they're not moving a muscle they're definitely like you know breathing heavily uh or like you know fidgeting or something like that but yeah they're all looking out <laughs> at the at the screen almost like they're looking out at you and you're like what the yeah. fuck? and you look down and the only person who's actually like walking is this like older man he's a referee yeah 
he's proudly wearing the the black and the white yeah stripes just run down this man's fucking body and he has very built like a very built upper body you know yeah he's also like i said pretty old sure and he looks right out at you and he goes Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. You look up and you're like, what the hell? And he goes, and he steps out of the TV screen. All the, <laughs> yeah. all the players are still just kind of watching, you know? And he yeah. steps out and he's kind of like, almost like he's walking on air. You know what I mean? As he <laughs> stands in front of you, you know? Sure. The, um, the light of the TV behind him is like almost causes like a, a hit almost like a halo to appear behind his head for like a second yeah. or two. And up close, he's even more built, you know? Jacked. Yeah. He goes, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. My name is Calvin Moreway. Moreway. <laughs> Though I am the buff referee. Referee, <laughs> referee. He goes, and the gods have empowered me to change the rules. <laughs> you can either Become a basketball coach or a successful musician, musician, musician. You decide, decide, decide. And before you can even put any thought into what this guy just offered you, you notice around his neck is the biggest whistle that you have ever seen in your fucking life. It's the yeah. same. It's the same silver as like a cold fucking pistol you know <laughs> okay i mean so the choices are a basketball coach or b successful musician yeah well i'm gonna choose b because it implies success i mean the successful part of it yeah he goes you have chosen be a successful musician musician And you don't, he does it so quickly that you don't even see like his hand move, but that whistle is like in between his lips, like that, you know? In Jesus the Christ. In the blink of an eye. And he blows the whistle and it's like, it's the, it's, it sounds like, a, you know, the sound that like an oncoming, uh, like train makes as it like barrels down on you. You know what I'm talking about? It's I that, mean, no, but it's that, <laughs> kind, it's, it's that kind of noise if the train was driven by like angels, you know, it's very loud and it is very intense and it feels for just a second, like otherworldly, you know? Yeah. And the air is sucked from your lungs. You blink and the, uh, the football game is like, going on now you know and uh, yeah the owner is like or rather the um the commentator is like all right we're gonna go ahead and check in and uh they go to uh, a camera angle of the owner's box and it's the, yeah uh, the washington commander's owner just getting his uh dick sucked by the, the <laughs> oh god damn the wife of the it's so personal she's sucking his dick and in a prime time football game on national television. And it cuts over to the owner of the uh the Cowboys and he's sitting and he's like looking out and he's he, like he sees it on like the big screen or whatever. And honestly, he kind of looks okay with it. Man. So that you're like, sucks. So Just a man like, getting cucked on live television. Well, is this in Dallas or is it in Washington? It's not made clear. So you, um, because you suddenly realize like, oh, wait, that's the front. That's how I get out of this mansion. And so you see the front door and like, you know, you walk out. And you jump into uh, the uh, the car that they have waiting for you. And 
he's he and, he, and he's like, where to, Mac? And you go, the songwriter, what? and you go, the songwriter's Hall of Fame. Because that night, Aaron, so for the past few years, you have been really, really working on your song parody skills. And you have been selling them to, uh, you started off selling them to like morning radio shows and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, uh, you know, some of them you thought were actually legitimately funny. Uh, and you got pretty, you've gotten pretty good, good at it. You've gotten pretty known too. The only thing that you won't do, uh, and no one's asked you to do this. You just, whenever you meet with somebody to uh, to work on a new project, you make it abundantly clear that the only song that you will not do a parody of is the song Shimmer by Fuel. Oh, it's it's too near and dear. You don't really elaborate uh, a lot. You know, you don't really talk, go into detail or anything, you know. Uh, but they're, everyone's just like, okay. Like, they don't really ask questions. They're just like, all right, that's fine. You're like, just so you know, I just, it's the first, it's what you lead with before you even talk about it. Yeah, I feel compelled to tell them this above anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's not like any, no one's ever asked you to do it. It's just, you feel like if anyone ever asked you to, you feel like you would get so angry that you might explode. So you just, you don't tell them that. You just make it clear that you don't want to do that. All so, right. And you're kind of getting your name out there, dude. Um, there's uh, Song Parody Weekly recently uh, interviewed you. And, yeah. Yeah, and that is kind of a big deal. Like, you've only been really, like, intently focused on it for about six months at this point. Um, for about three years, you've been working on it, but for the past six months is when you're like, I'm going to try to turn this into a career. And you've been kind of living, um, month to month as far as like making the rent and stuff. And there's definitely been some last minute calls as far as like finances go, but you can say that you're a working successful musician, you know, you are. Yeah. And it's it's that it's that thing uh, that, you know, a lot of people just aren't always aware of of how even if you're, you know, a working musician and, and you have fans and people, you know, you don't make a lot of money. You know what I mean? Unless, you know, you're. At the next level of, of, of success and you're not quite yeah, there, yeah. you're not quite there yet, but. You feel fucking close, you know. That would be nice. And you feel like tonight is almost like a lot of people are considering it. You're almost like you're in that old timey sense coming out party. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That old the southern professional debut. Yeah, kind of thing. that okay. old southern tradition of like you know I'm talking about that kind of walking down the the stairs in my in my big dress essentially in my face except it's it, instead of a bunch of like southern perverts that you're doing it for you're doing it for <laughs> the fucking industry la per yeah la perverts yeah. A, di a, a different type of pervert yes but perverts nonetheless <laughs> and so they um because that tonight aaron you are inducting weird al himself man one of my fucking heroes into the songwriters hall of fame wow what an honor i've and, said for a long time i've been saying this forever that weird al should get a halftime show at the super bowl i yep i firmly believe it would be the best one they've ever done yep and you intend to tell them that you actually like yeah. that's that's part of like your induction that 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 you say you know as you go up there and you go the first thing you say is why the fuck hasn't weird al done the super bowl halftime show yet and it gets a standing ovation for like a minute. Good. Good. And so even though you, even though you're the one inducting him in, it's almost seen like a passing of the torch thing, you know? Because, you know, Weird Al is getting up there. This is also a few years down the road. He hasn't announced any kind of plans to retire or anything, but, you know, 
it's realistically, it's, you know, probably coming in the next, you know, 10 years or so. Sure. At the very most, let's be honest. And you can only so, do that for so long, right? Yeah. And really, there's only really room for one major paradist at a time. Well, you're saying that I'm being the torch of, of that is being passed to me. That there. is the level of success we're talking. Yep. You have had some very big uh, influencers online uh, sing your praises. And you feel like, again, you're kind of living, you're kind of living month to month. But at the same time, you feel like things are about to pop off for you, you know, especially okay. after tonight. It's going to be, uh, your speech is going to be viewed by, um, they're estimating uh, 500 million people. Jesus, why? It's just I mean, big, I know. It's a big deal. People love Weird Al. Okay. And so um, you get to the, uh, you know, the Songwriters Hall of Fame and you, you know, you do the whole thing and you didn't, um, you purposely didn't meet weird al or anything uh, ahead of time you're like i'll i'll talk to him there's like you know gonna be like uh an after party you know after sure. the fact and even if you don't plan on necessarily hanging out for a long amount of time or anything you know you can definitely pop in and, and say hello and stuff sure and you know th they've made it clear that he you know he definitely would like to meet you afterwards you know it's just that yeah that would rule know, yeah it's just you know ahead of time he you know is trying to prepare his you know his whole thing and so i get it you uh you give like you know a what's later heralded as a fiery invocation about the art of weird al and you basically you're like look i don't know him as a person but to be honest as a lifelong fan and i don't know why i feel this way I feel like I kind of do. You know, I know I don't, yeah. but Weird Al has always felt, you know, close to us all, you know? And so, and, and you say, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. And you don't. You keep that fucking promise. Because you are bringing up to the fucking podium Weird Al himself. The crowd goes crazy. He walks up, you know? Yeah. And he, you know, gives, you know, thank you. He's like, hey, Aaron Brooks, everybody. And they're like, yeah. And he's like, whoa. Hey, remember his name, everyone. And everyone goes, whoa. Because they all know they all know what's I'm getting the blessing. Yeah, they all know what's happening. Because there's there's several other, you know, uh people who are gunning for the throne. Okay, but Weird Al is passing the torch to me. I mean, that's what a lot of people on the internet are going to start thinking in about two minutes, you know? And so okay. you kind of like stand there and you're like, holy shit. And so the rest of the night goes by like a, a blur. Um, you go and you, uh, you get to meet Weird Al after the fact. Uh, you walk over. He's like, whoa, Aaron. Hey, how, how are you? Thank Hey, thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. What would you say? Uh, I would say, of course, this has uh, been like the highlight of my comedy career. And I would just tell him like, hey, uh, your work meant a lot to me for a long, long time in my life. Thank you for everything you've done. He's like, I wouldn't want to, you know, I don't, you don't want to like, of course. Yeah. And he yeah. goes, he goes, oh man, Aaron, thanks. He goes, thank you. I really appreciate it, man. He's like, you know, I've, uh, I've uh, they played me some of your stuff. He's like, man, it's good. I like it, man. Thank you. That means more than you could imagine. He goes, oh, man, thank you. And then, um, you know, he, like a bunch of like, uh, you know, he has like, you know, VIP fan club members or whatever. Meet and sure, sure. The so they come in and he goes like, he's like, uh, all right. Uh, well, uh, anyway, just wanted to uh, say hey and uh, thank you. He's like, uh, I'm going to follow you on Instagram. Uh, I'll shoot you a message later on. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it, man. I go, great. Uh, pleasure to meet you. And again, congratulations on a well-deserved award. He's like, oh, thanks. He like walks away and starts talking to the, you know, the VIP people, you know? Yeah. So you are like 
you walk outside and you are practically floating, you know? Yeah. You go home and you lay in your bed and you realize you have to kind of like make a decision, you know? Do you keep on doing this? Because, you know, you, you definitely are going to, your career is definitely going to like start to take off at this point. But at the same time, yeah. maybe it does take a while, you know, maybe Weird Al st sticks around for a few more years, you know, who knows? I don't mind sleeping in the shadow of greatness. And so. Yeah, I keep. Yeah, of course. If I'm getting. Yeah. Weird Al is into this, you know, and I mean, who yeah, knows yeah. what will come of that relationship? Of course. So you um uh, are offered a job writing for uh the tonight show this is a few years wow. down, this is a few years down the road and uh there's a, a new host of the tonight show who is it it's danny goodwin Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? A couple years down the road, maybe he's turned things around. Good for him. He's very funny. And um and uh basically from what you can hear from the other writers that he is lucky they are there. So Oh, really? Yeah. So uh but he's, you know, fun to work with, you know. Okay, gotcha. It's not and so based so the thing with Danny is that as the host of the Tonight Show is that like he can he's it's not like he's like a, a bad person to to work for or anything like that. Um, he's funny on the air when he's just naturally talking to the guests and, you know, stuff like that. It's just that any kind of written thing that he submits is just garbage. And you guys have to either heavily rewrite it or find a polite but firm way of being like, this just isn't going to work like like he'll turn in like just just awful sketches like like one sketch where it's um the sketch is uh it's called fruit court and what it is is uh it's a trial about uh tomatoes about if tomatoes are considered fruit or vegetable it like that I think that's settled science so that's what you, Why do we... that's kind of what you say to him is you're like I feel like this has been but like he wrote like a a, a, a to his credit succinct and to the point sketch about this it's just it's just really bad like it doesn't and when, and when he turns it in he's like he's like he's like do you think people have noticed that it's a metaphor for civil rights and you're like ah Danny I don't know man you know. But other than that, it's it seems to be a pretty uh, a pretty good gig. You know, the ratings are good, so it's a it's definitely a dependable, solid job. Great. So, would you take that, or you have to make a? Do you feel like you have to make a decision that evening? Would you take that writing job at the Tonight Show with Danny Goodwin, or would you continue on your path of song parodies? I would continue on my path of song parodies. So you look out the window, you see like a owl on like a tree branch looking at you. It winks one of its gigantic fucking eyes. And it like, you know, takes to the fucking air. You send a text back to uh you have it saved in your phone as uh Danny Goodwin and then in parentheses do not answer. And you realize like, oh, I need I never updated that. That's kind of funny. And so you text him back and you're like, hey, you know, I I really appreciate the offer, but I gotta, you know, I'm gonna continue down, you know, my path, you know. Yeah. And he's like, and you get a text back and it says like Don't worry, bro, Sif. Totally understand, man. M A H N. Yes. So, why does Danny suck all of a sudden? Uh, 
<laughs> so you uh you 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 do the, you do the thing where you um you heart his like uh message you know yeah and um you feel kind of like keyed up you know but you're keyed up in like a good way you know you're just you feel like oh you're like super filled with energies you know so you go you decide to go outside for a walk you know uh you walk outside and you see that full moon in the sky and you look up at it and you start doing the thing that you've been doing for the last six months you start in your head writing a song parody about it and so about the moon at, yeah about the moon something inspired by the moon and so you look at that full fucking orb floating in the sky almost tantalizingly and you start to hum to yourself the melody to the black eyed peas let's get it started yeah but before you can come up with anything um that owl that you saw earlier uh comes down and uh slashes your throat with its talents what the fuck <laughs> you fall to your knees and you go why what the hell and you, it kind of comes back, and as it goes through your eyes, and you realize that it's a like a ro it's like a robot pretending to be an owl. What? And you're like, what the hell? And the last thing you see before it uh, claws your eyes out is you see this uh, this guy step out from uh, behind the uh, tree, and it's this uh, dude standing there, and you recognize what the him. fuck? You recognize him as uh, Mitch Perkins. Uh, he's uh, widely considered the number two. Uh, song parody writer in America. Mitch Perkins. Mitch Perkins. <laughs> yeah. And so um and you and as a uh, it claws your eyes out and you go blind, you hear him yell, I saw what happened, Brooks. Fuck you. What the fuck? Mitch Perkins has like a <laughs> robot owl yeah. that he killed me with? Yeah, he's like a uh he's like an inventor and shit. And so uh, he, uh, yeah, so the mechanized uh, owl, like, rips your throat out again, and you just, What like, the fuck? Fucking bleed out. Great. Mitch, Mitch Perkins goes on to... Uh, I don't fucking care about Mitch Perkins, Pat. To put out a a double album uh, where it's just all Black, it's all Black Eyed Peas parodies. Fuck him. Fuck you. And the, the dedication says, to Aaron Brooks... Taken too soon with a question mark. Oh God, Dan. I'm done. Fuck this. <laughs>